Hi, this is the Hope in Christ podcast, and I'm Ben Peterson, and I'm so glad that you're choosing to listen to the scripture highlight today. It comes from Daniel chapter 3. Let's start by talking a little bit about choices. By now, you're probably all familiar with the new For the Strength of Youth, A Guide for Making Choices, a revised booklet for youth and for everyone in the church. The teaching of this guide is counter to the thinking of our world. Think about the choices the world wants us to make. Much of the time today, people make choices based on what will make them more popular, what will make them more rich, what will give them more immediate pleasure or satisfaction, or what will be easiest. Many of the choices people make today are also based in their own strength and their own ability to do things, and their own selfish will. But the First Presidency's message at the beginning of the New for Strength of Youth says, We love you and have confidence in you. You are truly among Heavenly Father's choice spirits sent to earth at this time to do important things. So already we're turning away from the ways of the world and realizing we're here for an important reason, not just to do whatever we want. They continued, There may be times when you don't feel strong or capable. That's normal, especially in these moments, turn to the Savior. He is the strength of youth. This guide will help you build a solid foundation for making choices to stay on the covenant path. So let's think about choices for a second. What are some of the last choices that you made? I'll give you a few examples of possible choices, and maybe these apply to you, maybe they don't, but think about three choices that you have made recently. The first one is a choice that perhaps a teenager might make. That is, the choice to not lie to their parents about where they really were. Another one might be the choice to not give in to a popular trend that doesn't align with the truth that your body is a sacred gift from God. And a third possible choice, putting your phone away when you see an immoral or sexually provocative image or video that starts to stir your curiosity. Now think about three choices, perhaps the three I gave or perhaps three that you thought of. Think about what the positive and negative consequences would be for each of those choices. For example, a positive consequence for not lying to your parents about where you really were would be that you feel good inside. Your parents can trust you. A negative consequence to telling them where you really were might be that you were somewhere where you weren't supposed to be, and now they know, and now you have to face the consequences of your disobedience. When you think about the positive and negative consequences, how might that thinking influence the choices that you make? And how do you stand up for your beliefs and prevent from being discouraged by the way the world seems to be going? Let's go to Daniel chapter 3. King Nebuchadnezzar made a golden statue about 90 feet tall and 9 feet wide. This is a huge statue. And he gathered all the leaders of his Babylonian kingdom for the dedication of this statue. Everyone present was commanded to fall down and worship the statue once they heard the music play. But in Daniel chapter 3, verses 6 and 7, it says, And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth, shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and all kinds of music, all the people, the nations, and the languages, fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Now, a group of prominent Babylonians came to Nebuchadnezzar to report something that they observed during that dedicatory practice. In chapter 3, verse 12, they said to the king, There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Now, when you think of these young men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, out there refusing to fall down and worship the image, what do you imagine some of the less faithful Jews, their own peers, might have been saying to them as they refused to fall down and worship? Today, we hear so many people justifying why it's okay to do certain things. 
Do you imagine that other Jewish peers might have been trying to convince Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to justify why it would be okay just this once and that God would understand why they were bowing down to worship this statue and that it wouldn't make any difference? Do you hear similar chatter from people around you, maybe even other Latter-day Saints or Christians, who are trying to pressure you into being okay with the ways of the world? being okay with not wearing the temple garment faithfully, being okay not attending sacrament meeting, being okay not studying the scriptures, being okay to sip alcohol just this once, being okay to try vaping even if it's just one time. The consequences for these young men's choices would be harsh. If they were not to fall down in worship, they would certainly be cast into a fiery furnace, to a scorching death. But if they were to fall down and worship, the consequences in their minds of that choice would have been far greater and more eternally lasting. When these young men were approached by the king himself, they said, Our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But then the next words really strike me. Here they are, these confident young men, knowing that God can save them, and eventually, in some way, he will deliver them from the king. They have this sure faith in God. But the very next verse begins with the words, but if not. They knew God could save them, but they weren't necessarily certain that his will was to save them from the fiery furnace. They knew he could do it, and so they declared with strong and powerful faith that he is able to deliver us. And they followed that up with the determination that God will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. What a powerful faith these young men had. Sure, it took great faith to stand up and face that king and tell him that they were not going to fall down and worship, believing that God would deliver them and save them from any pain or suffering. But then they realized, perhaps it's not the Lord's will that we would be saved from this fire. Perhaps in their minds, they saw ahead to the Book of Mormon times when two young missionaries would watch as their new converts were burned in fire unable to rescue them by the power of God because they knew that it was God's will that this took place so that he could welcome those souls back home to his presence. And in that moment of realization that perhaps the Lord's will wasn't the same as their own, that perhaps at this moment he wouldn't step in and save them, though he could and knowing that he could, they said, even if he doesn't in this moment save us from this fire, Be it known unto thee, O king, we will still not worship thy God or the golden image which thou hast set up. Accepting and embracing the phrase, but if not, I'll still be faithful, takes even greater faith. In the April 2017 General Conference, Sister Joy D. Jones, primary general president, said this, but if not... Consider the meaning of these three words and how they relate to keeping covenants. These three young men were not basing their obedience upon being delivered. Even if they were not delivered, they would keep their promise to the Lord because they said they would. Keeping our covenants is always independent of our situation. These three young men, just as the stripling warriors, are wonderful examples of sin resistance for our children. You see, we show our faith in the Lord by choosing to obey Him regardless of the consequences. Real faith in God is trust in Him even if things don't turn out the way that we hope they will. Faith is more than just believing. Faith is total trust in God. Faith in God is knowing that He understands everything. Faith is knowing that He is not limited in His power that we can have complete reliance on Him, even if things don't go the way that we hope. We can and we must have the same faith that these young men had. 
Because our Heavenly Father has as his number one priority our salvation and exaltation, which requires us to be tried and changed from who we are now into someone more holy, and that takes opposition, because of all that, many times we will face a but if not. Many times the Lord won't make our path easy. Many times he won't deliver us from all of the trials. Sometimes we will be thrown into the fiery furnace just like these young men. But we can do it knowing that the Lord will always help us. He oftentimes won't deliver us from the fiery furnace. He won't necessarily make our path easy, but He will lighten our burden. As we yoke ourselves to Him in complete faith and fidelity to our covenants, He can help strengthen us and lift us higher, raise our sights, open our eyes, help us see what we're not seeing, so that it helps us endure the challenges that we will face in the days ahead. He might not cure our cancer, but He can help us find great blessings and eternal consequences in our suffering. He may not make high school an easy experience but He will train us to see how we can find joy in serving and helping others through that difficult time of life. So how can we develop that same kind of faith in the Lord? You might couple that question and the study of this chapter with President Russell M. Nelson's General Conference talk from April 2021, Christ is Risen, Faith in Him Will Move Mountains. He suggests five things that will help us develop faith and trust like that in God. As you go and study that talk and couple it with your study of Daniel chapter 3, I know the Lord will open your eyes and mine to see what we need to see, to know what we need to do in order to have that undying and unfailing trust in Him, to go forward and do the things we need to do even if things don't turn out the way that we hope they will. That kind of faith is power. That kind of faith can move mountains, and that kind of faith will carry us through every fiery trial of our life. Have a wonderful day, and keep your hope in Christ.